I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm thrilled to be joined by the wonderful Sophie Nelis to talk all about the latest season of Yellow Jackets. And I've heard you talk about the experience of, of making the, the first season of the show and just kind of being in that space of, of a production bubble and not really knowing until the show came out how people were going to respond to it. Um, and I was really interested in how that informed the experience of going into the second season where it feels like there's this kind of creative space in order to be able to push into a lot of the tonal aspects and a lot of the kind of darker aspects and the more extreme elements of the story a lot more because audiences responded so strongly to that in the first season. And so I was interested in, in kind of how you found that experience of really being able to lean into a lot of that more, particularly with Shauna. Yeah, I mean, you said it so well. I think that was the big difference coming into the second season. We knew how much the fans responded to the horror, the gory aspect of it. Um, and so we could just go full force into it and just tap into those feral animalistic sides of our characters, which has been really fun. Um, but also the big difference was people were so excited for the second season. I think it came with a lot of pressure. Like we wanted to live up to the expectations and deliver a second season that they were going to enjoy and that they felt like all of their questions were answered. And, um, so yeah, it was definitely hard to live up to the expectations. I feel like we have because we go even crazier if that's even possible. And um, every episode I feel like leaves us hanging um, and you're excited for the next one to come. So um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was very different, but um, we were just all excited to find each other again. The cast, um, we got so close during the, the first season. Um, and so I think when we all found each other again on the second season, it was like going to day camp and we were all excited to see our friends again. And even just narratively, it's it's the fact that there's the more heightened aspect of well is it's the middle of winter, food is much scarcer and hard, harder to find for them. And so there's the aspect of just being hungry every day, you know, not being warm and not having that kind of at least vague element of like safety and comfort that they had in first season in comparison. Um, and with Shauna's pregnancy being so much further along as well, how did those aspects kind of creating everything in a more heightened sensibility for all of the girls really change a lot of the aspects for you in terms of how you felt you found Shauna responding to a lot of situations and a lot of moments? Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, the stakes are definitely higher. Um, what's been really fun is also to play with like the costume department and to um, we were like more layered up and um, so there was a lot of that that was really fun and, and also being super mindful of the physicality of being cold, which sometimes is hard because you forget because we were actually shooting in studio and it got quite warm in there because the fire was always on. Um, and so just reminding ourselves to, you know, how the way you hold yourself, you're holding onto yourself like tightly and you're shivering and um, so all of those, we had to constantly repeat out loud and be like, remember, we're freezing, we're supposed to be freezing. Um, and yeah, I think Shauna, obviously, and for every character, I think it's the same. We all act a little more reckless this season. Um, I mean, I certainly in my life know that when I haven't eaten enough, I get very hangry. Um, and so there's just like a whole other level of hangry. And so Sure, you know, you're not thinking straight. Um, there's more conflict, you're more impatient. Um, and I just think they're slowly starting, probably because they're hungry and they're so out of touch with reality that they're slowly losing sight of of reality and 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 of what's right or wrong, of their moral compass as well. Um, and so that brings a lot of other issues like they're slowly getting to a point where they're ready to eat each other so yeah <laughs> I mean the the shift in the moral compass is one of the really interesting aspects to explore with the situation that they're all, all placed in and and you know the cannibalism is is kind of the perfect example of that because the first time that it happens in the series is with Jackie and it's such a new kind of unsteady thing for them to kind of step into at first. And then when it happens again later in the season, it's kind of a different experience. There's kind of, there's a slight familiarity with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so how did you want to play those two moments very differently? Because obviously the first moment is also so, you know, for Shauna centered around her friendship with Jackie and everything that that means to be kind of letting go of her in that way as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think it's interesting because I think both times she still carries a lot of guilt while doing it. Um, and I think she tries to rationalize her behavior by, you know, and when she eats Jackie, it's because of the baby. It's because she wants to survive. It's because she has someone else to care about. Um, but obviously feels very responsible because it's her best friend. And then I think with Javi, what's different is that they, I mean, they fully agreed to go and kill someone. Um, and so even though, again, they're trying to legitimize, legitimize it by saying, well, Lottie said it was okay, or we have to, to survive. Um, I mean, deep down, they know that what they're doing is, is, is not okay. And wrong to some extent. I mean, they, again, that's like a whole other debate because they do have to survive and there's never going to be the right person to kill. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's always, I think, followed by a lot of guilt. Um, but I think they're so far in starvation mode that they're just pushing those feelings deep down. Um, and I think that's why they're all going to resurface years later. <laughs> And towards the beginning of of the season, after after losing Jackie, and I, I wanted to ask about filming the scenes where Sean is still having conversations with her and kind of stealing herself away from the group, and because their their friendship had really had reached such a an interesting space that it's kind of like a very natural progression as you grow up. Sometimes they were just growing in different directions, and they there was still that love there, but it just wasn't connecting in the way that it had. And so when she lost Jackie there were all these unresolved emotions and feelings and, and conflicts to still be dealt with. Um, and so how did you want to go into filming a lot of those scenes and kind of what did you want Shauna to be receiving from those moments and, and need to get out of it? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, it's such a conflicting and interesting dynamic because um, I mean, I think, yeah, like you said, naturally, I do think they would have drifted apart, but just not, as far apart I think that's not what she intended to result from the relationship um and so so I think her like part of her feels like there's like a weight that's been lifted off her shoulders that she can finally find herself and her voice and 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 figure out who she is without Jackie but also she's absolutely terrified of a life without Jackie because it's all she's ever known and Jackie's been her guiding light her entire life and she's looked up to her she's Jackie's told her what to do what to wear how to act and I think she truly doesn't know who she is um without Jackie's approval um and yeah just trying to I mean I think she carries so much guilt around that she's just trying to um she's just projecting it into these like scenarios and trying to keep her alive to um make herself feel better or she's I mean obviously also living in in denial but um yeah I think she's just doesn't she can't quite cope with it or she's trying to find ways to cope with it that to some extent makes sense like if someone close to me were to die I'd probably keep their sweater and try to keep their scent alive as long as possible and um yeah so it's definitely an interesting dynamic but I think as as their um conversations progress um it always kind of ends up in like a nightmarish situation and i think that's kind of her own un unconscious brain telling her that she has to let go once and for all and in terms of the the group dynamic and a lot of the ensemble scenes with shauna she's always had this really observational quality to her where you know whenever she's not at the foreground of one of those scenes we kind of see her very keenly watching the other characters through the way that you're playing her um and so how have you kind of found the difference in the second season of kind of where you want her to kind of come forward a little bit more and where you still want her to kind of pull back and be watching people because it feels like she has become a little bit more front and center within the group, obviously as a natural progression of her pregnancy, but also through kind of finding herself a little bit more in the wilderness. Yeah. I think Shauna has that like leader instinct inside of her. I just don't think she wants it always to be, be in like a conflictual way. I don't think she likes conflict but I think she likes knowing who she is and she likes standing for herself and I think that's the big difference so she'll never sort of want to like lead the group and I don't think she'll ever take position in like the way that Lottie did for say and like being like I will lead this group but I do think that she starts to speak up for herself when she's not okay with something if she 
thinks that something is off or weird, or if she disagrees, I think she now starts to step up. But I think she has a lot of, I think she doesn't really trust a lot of people in the group. So I think she bases herself a lot off of her like instincts and her in her monologue. And I think that's why a lot of times she still decides to step back in the role of the observer and just kind of make up her own opinion about people without being so vocal about it. I know. And I, I feel like you're touching on such a great point in terms of, of her being like very withdrawn from some members of the group and, and the way that they're dealing with everything and kind of leaning a little bit more in the kind of realistic version of, of survival. And that comes into play even in terms of the birthing scene where she has, she's out of consciousness and she's having that dream and kind of how she responds to the girls around her. But there was such a buildup already to that moment in terms of the way that she was responding when they were chanting near her. And so kind of knowing that you had that, that scene and that sequence of events in her mind and how she imagined them all behaving how did you want to kind of build up to that in some of the scenes preceding it? Because it didn't feel like it came out of nowhere once we saw that. Yeah, I think Shauna definitely brings this more grounded um, human side to the rest of the group. And I think it's what would, I mean, happen in a group of people. I don't think everyone would just blindly become followers. Um, and I think she wants to believe and hold on to something but because she has like a baby to care about I think that's mainly her driving force more than like believing in this like weird god or higher power um I don't know I I feel like you you've thought this through more than I have actually I kind of I mean it's I it's not as if I really created a build-up because I didn't know what was going to happen in episode six. Like we read the episodes and we shoot them as we go. So it's not as if I can really re yeah, I can't really have that build up. I think they just kind of wrote it so well. And I mean, that's the, all, I, all props to like a writer is that, I mean, they, that's what they do. They finesse everything so well so that it all falls into place and that it creates at the end, this beautiful result. But um. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just love how, yeah, she keeps a more rounded, realistic side to things. Um, her and, and, and maybe Sophie Thatcher a little more. But then there is that shift at the end. I think it's because she has lost everything um, and she just has nothing to rely on anymore that she does also sort of fall into Lottie's footsteps a little. Mm-hmm. And And speaking of the relationship with Lottie, you know, it was such a shift for Shauna in in just seeing the physical attack that she unleashes on Lottie in that moment. But again, seeing everything that she's gone through and the fact that the worst thing that could have happened to her has happened to her um, and she's still there dealing with it. What what was the dynamic that the two of you found in in playing a scene like that? Because it's it's such a physical scene, but it's coming from such a place of raw emotion for both of them. We had a lot of fun shooting it. We were so excited. When we read the script, I was like, we I mean we lived together and so we read it together and I was like yo this is so cool we get to beat each other up and we're best friends in real life um we had so much fun with it we were laughing in rehearsals like we would not take it seriously it looked so ridiculous I think our team was a little like people on set were like they're not gonna pull this off and then when they called action I just started throwing punches off like my life depended on it and it just looked really cool. And I think it's fun because I, well, I mean, our, our show, obviously it being such a, a strong uh, female cast, I don't think we're expecting to see scenes like that uh, of like pure, brutal um, violence um, and physical like scenes like that. And, and we were just really excited to play them and it felt good. And I mean, it makes total sense. I think, like you said, Shauna has nothing else to lose. And I think she is carrying so much weight on her shoulders that she just needs to unleash it. And Lottie just, you know, takes the fall and um, is on the receiving end. But I just love at the end also how Shauna just rolls her eyes. Like she's so cut out or far away from her emotions, from any empathy and and any sadness that she has left in her and that she just rolls her eyes at Lottie being almost dead. And that moment just killed me. 
I also love what you're bringing up there about the the space that you were in right before shooting a scene like that. Um, Cause I feel like whenever I've listened to you talking about the show, you kind of, you always talk very specifically about, you know, stepping in and out of the moments and not kind of staying in the darker spaces. And I was interested if that's something that you found specific to this show or, or if like, regardless of the project, that's kind of always been your dynamic and how you go into scenes and how you prefer to work. I just am like that. Um, I feel like such an imposter in this industry because I don't know how to be method like at all, even if I tried. Um, as soon as they all cut, I'm like thinking of what snack I'm going to go get at Crafty. Um, literally, like I just don't, even when I'm playing Shauna, I don't feel like I'm becoming someone else. I just feel like myself pretending to be sad. Um, and so, yeah, I don't really carry any of it, any of it home. Obviously, sometimes I'm like tired or had a rough day. So I have Corny, who's my emotional punching bag waiting for me at home and who we can rant about the day together. But, and I also think it is really specific to the show that we, every one of us kind of try to keep some levity on set because it is so hardcore and, and deep and uh, rough that it gets very heavy sometimes. And so we try to, between setups, like we mess around and we play with our prosthetics or whatever, and we prank each other and yeah, we definitely do keep a lot of, uh, we we joke a lot around on set because it gets through our days a little faster. And I also wanted to ask about working with Liz Garbus on the episode where Shauna gives birth, because it sounds like she kind of had a lot of very specific ideas in terms of going into a scene like that and and how to film it. Um, and, but also kind of like created the space that you needed for, for your performance. Um, and so I was just interested in kind of the, the conversations that the two of you had and, and how you really worked together collaboratively for a moment like that in the show that was so pivotal. Yeah. I mean, Liz was the most perfect director for that episode. Um, first of all, I was, freaking out because I felt like I had so much pressure on my shoulders and I was literally sobbing um, in front of her because I was like, I can't do it. And she was like, it's going to be fine. She sent me a bunch of um, reference videos to to look at of women giving birth. Um, and just like, I mean, she's had children, so she knows. So in the like physicality of it all, like how, how would like a contraction feel like? How would you, how would your body move um all of those she was very helpful with um very good also at like keeping my energy throughout the scenes because there's so much and so much screaming that like we had to like pace ourselves so I wouldn't get exhausted too quickly and um finding the right progression because um it's always obviously intercut with the adults and so finding where she's at when we find her again in every scene like the level of exhaustion that Shauna is at at that point um but I mean uh, above all of the technical aspects, she was just so kind and brought such a a respectful and and nurturing atmosphere on set. Like she was just so there for me. Um, Always made sure she was like my little mama bear and um, just, yeah, so encouraging and, 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 open-minded and I really felt like if I if there was ever a moment I needed to stop or I needed I wasn't feeling okay if anyone wasn't feeling okay um because it we're obviously brushing such a sensitive subject um that on set we wanted to make sure we were very sensitive to everyone's past um and yeah we just it it really was a hard but beautiful week and I went I would not do it with anyone else than than Liz and you were talking there about the the physical aspects of it but it's such a physical scene and such an emotional scene um and I know that even on the physical side like you it sounds like you lost your voice after after a few takes as well just from everything the strain that it was putting on your throat um and so did you end up finding that the physical challenges or the emotional challenges were kind of the bigger aspect at play once it came to filming it uh I think both equal honestly the I mean yeah the phys- the the men the mental ones are more there like when she loses the child and that was a really rough one but I think for the rest it's more yeah the physical kind of like shaking my abs like were just so contracted and and um yeah my voice I mean after like two screams I was like I can't speak anymore and I people were feeding me or kept handing me these hot teas with like lemon and ginger and all of those things in it. Um, 
I would say both pretty equal, just depending on like where we were at in the in the storyline. But yeah, I finished the week just ruined in every possible way. <laughs> and when it came to filming the, you know, what turns out to be the dream sequence, was it important to you that that was just played in absolute truth? Because in her mind, she she's physically and emotionally experiencing every single one of those beats to the point where when she wakes up, she still thinks that she's in that reality versus the reality that she's actually in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've had dreams that felt so real that I'm like, there's no way, like I physically woke up like some people sometimes I dream I'm in love with someone and I wake up and I'm like I am in love like I am in I can feel it I can feel it um so yeah I think um and also because we didn't want the audience to we wanted to fool the audience so we wanted to make it as realistic as possible and also um well because these are all true moments in like the story of giving birth, like the aftermath of it, having it, the the tears of happiness, how hard it is to breastfeed, the um, sleepless nights, probably nightmares also. Like there's so many changes that your body and your brain undergoes after giving birth that I think these are all real moments, even though they're not all real in our story, they're all real. And sorry, I'm like, like, (laughs) my, my like little light is going a little everywhere, but Anyways, um, yeah, so I, I I do think that we wanted to make it feel as realistic as possible. And then that's what makes the actual ending so devastating and heartbreaking. And you've spoken about how in that scene in particular, the, the rest of the cast gave you so much to kind of play off of and so much in response. What What was the difference in the experience of filming that scene with them as opposed to other scenes that you've done with with the entire ensemble together? Well, every scene is really fun. Th- th- this one is just like, they gave me so much that it was so easy for me to feel sad because they would look at me with puppy eyes and they looked truly really heartbroken. Um, but I think that's what, uh, that is really a strong point of our cast is that we, every scene that we, that I read, I envision it in a certain way. And then we get to film it on set and everyone brings their own vision for it. And that's what creates it fully. Like it's it's really fascinating because often I envision it some way and I'm like, oh, no tears here. Like this is like, we're more angry. And then people start sobbing and I'm like, oh, this is the direction. We're, okay, let's go there. And so we're all kind of feeding off of each other. And when they call action and everyone goes hundred percent, that's when the magic happens. And so it's, we're really just playing ping pong off of each other. And it's really fun to witness. And what was the difference for you in playing scenes following that loss? Because, you know, it's it's such a traumatic thing for her to have been through, and especially in the the setting and the situation that she's in, being out in the middle of the wilderness. Um, and and again, it also kind of goes back to something that you were talking about earlier of her protectiveness for her child. And now it's kind of gone back to I'm just protecting myself now. I don't have this other person to to look out for in the way that I did. And so how did that change scenes going into the rest of the season for you? Well, I think it's, I think it's not, I, I think she's just like cut off from any emotion that she's left. Like she can't take in anymore. And so I think right now her one and only concern is how to survive. I will be ready to do anything and cut anyone like she just I don't even think she cares for herself anymore like in the like she has no empathy for herself I think she just wants to make it through get out that's her sole purpose um and yeah we'll see where that leads in season three but hopefully more physical fights I hopefully she'll kill more people I mean I don't know but I want to see her like full-on psycho like ice cold um like mean I want to see her fully mean yeah and overall with the show as well you know it's it's watching these girls try to figure out how to survive and and to develop those instincts but obviously none of them have ever gone through an experience that's even slightly prepared them for this but having been through several months now of of being out in the wilderness have you kind of wanted there to be a bit of an evolution in terms of how Shauna approaches it and even just the way that she thinks about problem solving and and trying to figure out how they're all going to do that together? Yeah, I think she's certainly grown familiar to her environments. I mean, just the way that she cuts Javi up, like she sort of cuts it, like she knows where, where to cut him. Um, 
she knows how to do it. Um, and yeah, so the whole sort of like hunting, you, they, they've just grown accustomed to this kind of life. Um, I think what's more so new is, yeah, it's, it's, it's when, the, well, I think what's going to be different is the next season is like living outside. That's going to be different because they still had some sort of normalcy. Like they have a roof under their heads. They have like a fire pit. They have like books to read, some sort of entertainment, like privacy to go to the bathroom, but to be fully out in the wilderness, I think that's going to be such a huge game changer. And I think that's what's going to bring again, more so of the like animalistic, like survival mode instincts out. Well, I can't wait to watch the the third season when we finally get there. Um, I love everything that you've built into this character and into your performance over the first couple of seasons. So thank you so much, Sophie. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to chat.